The topic we chose was the chemistry of bioluminescence. The word is derived from the prefix bio, meaning life in Greek, and the suffix lumen, which translates to light in Latin. Bioluminescence is a special type of chemiluminescence, which is a term that describes the chemical production of light. Bioluminescence is more specific as it pertains to the process of living things producing light. Most luminescent animals have their own specialized light producing organ, their own light producing cells, or house symbiotic luminescent bacteria. Although there is variation across different species, the chemical reaction that produces light can be simplified to one general process. Typically, a pigment called luciferin, in the presence of oxygen, is oxidized in a reaction catalyzed by an enzyme called luciferase. The oxidation of luciferin producing oxyluciferin releases energy in the form of visible light. Cofactors such as calcium and ATP aid luciferase in catalyzing the reaction of luciferin with oxygen. Sometimes luciferin, a catalyzing protein, and a cofactor form a single unit called a photoprotein, which can be triggered to produce light when a particular ion, typically calcium, is added to the system. In these cases, light is produced in flashes rather than in a continuous glow. This occurs in some marine organisms through a photoprotein called ichorin, which is used primarily by the jellyfish Ichoria victoria. Some examples of organisms that use bioluminescence are shown here. To the right is a Caribbean ostracod and female anglerfish. The male Caribbean ostracod uses its self-produced light to attract mates, while the anglerfish uses its bulb filled with bioluminescent bacteria to lure prey. In addition to attracting mates and luring prey, it can also be used for communication, protection, and illumination. The picture on the right depicts how bioluminescence can be used to startle or confuse a predator. Although there is a large group of organisms that could be focused on, luminescent bacteria and fireflies are among the most common and well-known. Bacteria are the most widely distributed light-emitting organisms on Earth. Most are capable of living free, but the majority are found associated in symbiosis with hosts. Bacteria are nourished with readily available food sources for growth, and the host utilizes the bacteria in various ways. For example, pinecone fish use luminous bacteria in their ventral cavity to illuminate surroundings and for intraspecies communication. There are three major genera, Photobacterium, Vibrio, and Photorhabdis. These differ in growing conditions and the reaction kinetics of the luciferase, but all use highly homologous biochemical machinery to produce light. The biochemical process of bacterial luminescence involves a heterodimer bacterial luciferase with two different polypeptides, which are referred to as alpha and beta, or lux A and lux B. The active site of the enzyme is within the alpha subunit, and the substrates consist of the luminiferin flavin mononucleotide, also known as FMNH2, molecular oxygen, and long-chain fatty aldehyde. Ex excess energy from the oxidation of flavin mononucleotide and the aldehyde, which occurs along with the reduction of oxygen, results in the emission of blue-green light at the wavelength of approximately 490 nanometers. Although luminous bacteria have the capability to produce light, not all of them do. Many bacteria express bioluminescence only under certain minimum population conditions, a fascinating form of gene regulation called quorum sensing. This phenomenon is why marine luminescent bacteria that live free in the ocean do not emit light, while those living in a localized or confined environment do. The catalysts in bioluminescence that induce the expression of the Lux CDABE gene are regulatory proteins and a small chemical compound called an autoinducer. Bacteria need a confined, nutrient-rich environment to accumulate autoinducer. Then, 
when the concentration of autoinducer reaches a certain level, the luminous system is activated. By this system, bacteria sense when a sufficient concentration has been reached based on autoinducer accumulation, so that bioluminescence only occurs when nutrients are sufficient and the environment is favorable. Although bacteria are among the most seemingly simple organisms, they have an efficient system of both light production and gene regulation that allows them to use bioluminescence advantageously for their survival. Although they are not as common as bacteria, fireflies are among the most widely observed bioluminescent organisms. Fireflies are able to control their light by controlling when they add oxygen to their light organs. When oxygen enters the light organ and binds to the cell's mitochondria, the presence of nitric oxide allows the oxygen to flow into the light organ to set off the reaction. Because nitric oxide breaks down quickly, the flashes can happen with a high frequency. There are a variety of reasons that fireflies light up. Larvae display their glow to communicate their bad taste, while adults have flash patterns that are used to identify members of other species and members of the opposite sex, and in some cases, for mating. Fireflies produce light by a chemical reaction in their light organ, in which ATP, firefly luciferin, and firefly luciferase are combined. Firefly luciferin is an organic compound with a ring system and the chemical formula C11HAN2O3S2. The luciferin is oxidized, which releases energy in the form of visible light. This results in brief flashes in the abdomen of the firefly. The light emitted varies from green with a maximum wavelength of 535 nanometers to red with a maximum wavelength of 630 nanometers. This variation is due to different forms of oxyluciferin forming at different acidities, with red being produced at a pH of 6.0 and green at a pH of 8.0. The generally accepted mechanism involves a process in which the d firefly luciferin reacts with ATP and magnesium ions to form luciferyl adenylate. A proton is taken from the C4 carbon of the adenylate by a side chain amino acid of the luciferase. A molecular oxygen is added to the anion, and the electronically excited oxyluciferin molecule and carbon dioxide are formed. Red light emission occurs from the keto form of the emitter, or the oxyluciferin, at a pH of 6.0, as previously mentioned, while yellow green light emission occurs from the enolate diet dianion form of the oxyluciferin at a pH of 8.0. The light emitted by fireflies is cold light, without a lot of energy being lost as heat. Humans also have some uses for bioluminescence. Bioluminescence has primarily been used in scientific research, specifically through fluorescent tags. This is when a fluorescent molecule selectively binds to a specific region or functional group on the target molecule. Common tags include ethidium bromide and green fluorescent protein. Through the use of fluorescence, detection of specific cells and living organisms can be accomplished, such as in the brain, where fluorescent probes have been used to reveal the mechanisms of neuron communication and the activity of surface receptors on brain cells. In addition, by using fluorescent tags, the mechanisms of the infection process of several types of viruses can be determined, particularly in how the virus enters the host cell. Luciferin and luciferase have also been used in biological research, space exploration, and oceanography to detect traces of ATP. The possibility of using bioluminescence as a light source has been considered, and there are lanterns made from polarized fireflies. However, generally, bioluminescent light is too dim to provide more than an ambient glow, and though attempts have been made to make bioluminescent bacteria brighter, there has been little success. The experiment we did was an attempt to grow bioluminescent bacteria in a lab, 
which required us to grow the bacteria in a nutrient broth and to spread it onto plates to observe the formation of colonies and test for bioluminescence. The bacteria we used was Pseudomonas fluorescens, which is a common rod-shaped bacteria that glows under ultraviolet light. A 100 milliliter nutrient broth was made with 3.17 grams of soy broth powder and DI water. This mixture was then heated to 121 degrees Celsius and stirred on a hot plate. After it reached this temperature, it was then taken off the hot plate and allowed to cool to 60 degrees Celsius in order to avoid burning and killing the bacteria. Agar was simultaneously prepared using 3.45 grams of agar nutrient powder and 150 milliliters of deionized water to make the gel for four plates. The agar was heated to 100 degrees Celsius and stirred on a hot plate. Afterwards, it was cooled to 80 degrees Celsius and poured into four petri dishes. The bacterial pellet was broken down by mixing it with a small amount of nutrient on a vortex. It was then thoroughly mixed with about 50 milliliters of nutrient broth and incubated at 36 degrees Celsius. The bacteria was incubated overnight and grew in the test tube, as evidenced by the turbidity of the nutrient broth. It was spread on to the four plates of agar, then incubated at about 30 degrees Celsius. At 24 hours, one of the plates showed significant growth, while the other three plates showed little to no evidence of bacteria colonies forming. However, after 48 hours in total, all four plates showed significant growth, as shown in the picture below. Although our bacteria had grown well in their plates, unfortunately, when placed under an ultraviolet light, the bacteria did not show signs of luminescence. To the right is a picture of what Pseudomonas fluorescens should look like under ultraviolet light. We tried to investigate why our bacteria did not glow and we came across some studies that showed Pseudomonas fluorescence only glows under iron deficient conditions, which our environment did not adhere to, which may have resulted in our bacteria not glowing. In addition, the bacteria was freeze dried, which may have caused it to behave differently than if it had not been. Possible improvements to our experiment include keeping a Bunsen burner running during the experiment in order to sterilize the area, running more trials in order to reduce the chance of error, obtaining non-freeze-dried samples of the bacteria, and creating an iron-deficient environment, although we probably do not have the equipment for that in school. Bioluminescence is one of the most fascinating and visually amazing phenomena of nature, a show of the incredible power of organisms to adapt to various situations and the world of biochemistry behind the production of light, bioluminescence captures both the beauty and complexity of the natural world. From attracting prey and hiding from predators to communication and reproduction, the production of light has become much more than the release of energy, but rather a key component in an intricate web of interspecies and intraspecies relationships. Although it is not directly connected to humans, it has provided us with a means for making monumental discoveries in science, particularly in the field of biology, and acts as a possible resource for lighting. Thus, bioluminescence, though it may reside primarily in microscopic organisms, tiny bugs, or creatures miles and miles under the sea, is a crucial component to humans as well, as a stunning insight into the living world.
thank you so much for watching our presentation. <laughs>